I've talked to a few guys in the past week and a half that do not attend Christchurch, but they do watch the outtakes. Yes. They don't watch the content part, but yeah, they nobody absolutely watches the content love. Part. Well, Julie does. But. Well, yeah. Ke- Kelly does. Other than that, that's the only people I know. <laughs> but they actually Julie love. And Kelly. Terry watches it. Andrew's entire life group watches it, apparently. Yeah, my life group uh, really, actually, there's a few things they wanted me to bring to the podcast today. Really? Oh, nice. It's yeah. a cult. So. <laughs> Roger watches it every week. Can't speak for so, Pat. So, Jeff Roger just does. called one of our life groups a cult. No, so. let's be specific. Your <laughs> life group. <laughs> hmm. uh, I did not see that coming. <laughs> So, you were talking about dry bones this week. We had a little bit of debate in uh, our group last night. Really? Yeah. About what? Well, <clears throat> you, here's my turn to be sacrificed. <laughs> well, so one fairness, I wasn't here, uh, oh, so well, I didn't that, actually hear the sermon. So I can't. It's online if you want to listen to it. Yeah, that it's kind of like the podcast. If we have what the outtakes of it, to say? <laughs> we got some highlights. I, I've I've seen them. Are you playing that Instagram so, video? Here's, Instagram video is awesome. They said that you uh, the whole sermon in sixty seconds. Yeah, why didn't you, I just do it that way? <laughs> you described the dry bones getting on flesh and all these different cool. things. Well, to be fair, the Bible actually did that, yeah. right? But Ezekiel you, thirty-seven, right? Except, Maybe your group should read that passage. Is it? Maybe they should read the Bible. <laughs> It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> is it literal or is it You're figurative? To equip you, to lead you, to teach you, to guide you, to convict you, to help you be a mighty army for him. Who said I don't get excited? To change the world. Right. Actually, right. Stefan like auto-generated yeah. that with AI to I know it is. sped it's, it up. It's enhanced greatly. <laughs> so is that figurative or literal? It was a vision. Mm-hmm. Say, that's yeah, I think, it's, I think it's. I think it's. Well, they understood it the way you preached it. It was literal, and they were about to like come knocking on your door last night. So I uh, said, "Well, oh, I think they weren't paying attention." I said, <laughs> "I said I think Ezekiel is more of a prophetic. It's a vision. Word. I said it's a vision. Okay. The well, I wasn't here. The, so. the text says it's a vision. Right. Yeah. Uh, in read Ezekiel read your one. Bible. No. Well, that that's what. <laughs> They all read it, and that's why they oh, had that's issue why with they, it. Oh, okay. Because well, but you, there was it, a description of like this flesh and tendons being put back on, and they're like, "Well, this is really just a vision, not yeah, but literal." It's a it's a vision that's graphic on purpose, it, to make it to be as real as possible. So when they when they hear that, they, they see the the specific thing that God wants to do with them as a people. Yeah, because that's what it's about. They're dead. They're like, dead because of sin. Right. And he wants to bring them life. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> anyway, we could. that's the last week. Yeah, so anyway. Hmm. I'm surprised they thought that. No, they thought it was a picture. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised they thought they, I didn't think it was a picture. Because they had read. Maybe they misunderstood what. They had read Ezekiel, and they were like, no, Reverend this is. Reverend Jeff said. Mm. Father. Yeah. Hmm. It's hard to communicate. I mean, it's a real challenge what we're tasked to do. I was going to say, sure. that's what my wife tells me all the time, too. <laughs> you, you struggle to communicate? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I understand myself perfectly. Well, because it's not just you. That you have to you have to understand what you're wanting to say and then articulate that. But then there's this this filter of interpretation that comes when people hear. Mm-hmm. You know, and they... And you have literally different people all over the place. Absolutely. Well, yeah. many times you're, you're, you're making an assumption of what, how they're going to take it or what they already know or what their perception of is something when you have right. no clue. And their attention comes, you know, I talked for too long, 30, 34 minutes, 37 minutes, 40 minutes, mm-hmm. 43, 30. 30. I like 30 better. Um, but I mean, none of us pay attention for 30 minutes. No, we come and go. So somebody will say something, and we'll journey down that in our mind and quit paying attention to what they're. St- I mean, not that we do this with our spouses or anything like that, but we quit paying attention to what's going on at that moment, and we're <laughs> thinking about how we're going to respond or whatever. So <clears throat> communication is a challenge. 
good thing we have the Spirit to help us. So your life group didn't hear at all the rest of the sermon because of what they perceived right. at the beginning. Yeah, they the thought first verse. They thought yeah. Jeff was preaching heresy. I bet they're just reflecting back upon it because they surely weren't reading Ezekiel before we got to Ezekiel. I don't know. One of the your group. Hmm. They do what they want. They're a bunch of renegades. <laughs> they like communicate during the week. They pray for each other during the oh, week, man. all That's, without me saying any. They're taking of it the, serious. Yeah. What's wrong? They like help each you other guys have during a group, the week. A group text. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Struggle. So you couldn't be a part of that. Yeah. I mean, they're like actually interactive in each other's lives, and right, it's crazy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's got to stop. Where'd that model come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad they're talking about it. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. So, I mean, is there something displayed somewhere that? Have them act in such a way? What do you mean? Toward towards one another. Like throughout the week. Like almost like they're walking through life together. <laughs> yeah. It's a thing we do. We're gonna start Bible studies. I'd be interested to hear about that more. <laughs> no more life groups. <laughs> <laughs> we better get going. Titus. 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 Welcome to the Rethink Podcast. The book of Titus. How would you like to be Titus? What a task. I wouldn't want to be Titus. So, do you know, if you put the whole life story of Titus together, he's not only commissioned with fixing the problem (laughs) on Crete, Mm -hmm. but Corinth Mm -hmm. and (laughs) the Dalmatia or whatever that place is over that's, what, Croatia now? (laughs) Man, Paul sends him on some real chores. He's a fixer. He's a fixer. wonder what kind of, like, dude he was. My first impressions were wrong, I believe. I think... I pictured him like Timothy. You know, Paul talks about Timothy being young and don't let people look down upon you because of that. Mm-hmm. I think Titus is, he's been with Paul for 20 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had missed that somewhere along the studies, but he's been with he's been with Paul for 20 years. He's probably f- at least 40, <laughs> right? You guys are all 40? No. No. Yep. 40's mature. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <clears throat> I didn't realize it had been 20 years. You guys are young. Have you put all the missionary journeys together? In fact, there's some who <clears throat> theorize that Titus, you know, he's he's a Gentile, and um, they chose not to circumcise him, right? Some people, oh, as mentioned in Galatians, there are mm-hmm. some people who think then he was with Paul and Barnabas when they returned to Jerusalem in Acts 15. Mm-hmm. And he is like an example. Mm-hmm. Of a person yeah. who is a, is a Christ follower, who's a Gentile, who didn't become Jewish, um, and makes him the ideal model. I don't know how you can know that, because it says Paul and Barnabas, um, in Acts 15, 2 or 3, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others. Yeah. So, so it's, he's not enumerated by name, but there's a, an assumption that maybe he's one of those. I don't know how you know that. But then he goes on the journeys with Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Paul leaves him at Corinth and has him collect money for the the poor in Jerusalem. He has him train, you know, take take letters back and forth, leaves him here at Crete. It's he's quite a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I think he's got to be you ask what kind of person he was. My impression of him is that he must have been um like super solid. You know, oh, like yeah. he's not going to sway. Mm-hmm. He's 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 just got that personality of um I don't know. To me, he's black and white. Like this well, is the you, way it steadfast. is. Steadfast. When you yeah. start, when you start reading all that he has done and all that he's walked through, Paul and all that kind of stuff. Like to me, I see it like one, he's super committed to to the gospel, super committed to Paul. But at the same time, like he's that guy, like that you see. I, I mean, even now, like you, there's people like this that they're behind the scenes, but like they make things happen, they put things in motion, they're encouraging, they're pushing along. But yet they don't have to be that guy up front. Right. And they never have to be the guy. But without them, like stuff is not happening. It just right. falls apart. It does. There's, there's nothing that lasts without yep. guys like Titus. Yep. Well, he's, and he's dealing with a really tough crowd here. Oh my here. goodness, yes. Like you got the Cretans, but then you also have the Jews <laughs> who are Cretans as well. But man, so like his theology, because Titus, the book of Titus really deals with the sound doctrine and sound living. And establishing sound leaders. Yep. Mm-hmm. So he's really confronting 
a big issue. And it's the all the churches on the island of Crete, too. You know, the, all the house yeah, churches. Yeah, it's just not just one church. It's, right. It's a whole region. Yeah, he's Paul gave him a big job to do. I can't imagine the opposition to go in and... Nobody wants to be told they're wrong and yeah. need to change. Right. None of us do. Right. And when you start talking about faith issues... Mm-hmm. Well, and purity issues, because a lot of it's the you have to do this in order to be righteous or, you know, have a relationship with God because they were bringing in those Jewish myths and all that stuff. Well, I think contextually, though, we need to talk about, like, who did he go to? The Cretans. Who were the Cretans? Like, mm -hmm. what were they like? They were like the I Las can keep Vegas. talking, or you guys can, but yeah. Go for it. I'd like to hear yeah, Well, I mean, just say. like the, the type of people that is, is described. I mean, these were some rough... Ruffians. I mean, I don't know how you, how you describe ruffians. it. Ruffians. I mean, they were... Is that a word? Yeah, yeah. it is. Ruffians. Look it up. Um, only people over 40 know that word, though. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's an old word. It is. Ruffians. Yeah, for, my grandma used to use it. old soul. Referring to my brother. Oh. Yeah. And But I mean, like, these these are some... Ru <laughs> he doesn't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Not a favor. I don't He's think. like a Cretan. Yes, exactly. <laughs> He's probably part of the Russians at the band of this podcast. <laughs> But I mean, like these were—I mean, these were some rough guys, and they were—they weren't known to be truthful. They weren't known to be people of integrity. Um, you got me on it a couple of days ago, and then I read up on it. But like they were like hired mercenaries. Yeah, they were hired soldiers. I read that too. And so like those type of people, like they'd be—it mean, don't matter who, like as long as they got paid. Highest bidder. And when I say mercenaries. like mercenaries, like these are guys that they went in and yeah, they assassinated, they killed, They're hired, they killers. did moot exactly. And then because of where it was in the shipping trade, piracy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like all the ports. So like you think about Titus walking into to something like that um, and what that would look like. And then coming, obviously he came with the papers with authority, but still like the resistance. Mm -hmm. like, like who is, are you? Like Which you think about resistance like... we have in the church. Yeah. It's, still like, it's like me saying, Andrew, I want you to go to, to, to Vegas and Frisco and LA yes. and Washington DC and inner city, New York. I mean, like, yeah, I want you to go talk to those folks and fix the problems yeah. they have. Set up good leadership there. Yeah. Do, do it now. <laughs> We're not careful. That's another reason this is about to get banned. But <laughs> I, I think when I was, when I, when you sent that link to all that info, started you watching catching it yesterday, all this, where all this info is coming from. The Holy Spirit yep. from Jeff. <laughs> but look at the look at the detail though. In verse two, he says, uh, "In the hope of eternal life, which God, which God who does not lie." Mm -hmm. I was like, "That's a weird detail because he, you know if you read all yes. the introductions of yes. Paul, yeah, like look, at, he, look at verse twelve and thirteen though. Mm -hmm. What are they known for? This is their own poet, sixth yep. century BC, lying, deceiving, greed, yeah. has, evil." Yep. Yeah. Liars, evil broods, lazy gluttons. Yep. And this Ooh. testimony is true. <laughs> Which <laughs> is also, so that's a... Liars. Yeah. Therefore, rebuke them sharply. Mm -hmm. a, cre cre a Cretan, mm -hmm. the Greek word, is also referred to as a someone who's a liar. I mean, mm -hmm. literally. Yep. That's what the word means, a liar. And they that's, like that's who they are. Yeah. Well, so Zeus was, was their yeah. like patron god on Crete, and in Greek culture... That was the epitome of success, is if you could lie your way to the top, because that's what Zeus essentially did, deceiving. So deceit and, is mm -hmm. actually an honorable mm -hmm. character trait. Wow. And the that's what they were, deceive. they were striving yeah. towards. But if you don't know that, and you read this, you're like, that's right. kind of an interesting detail, a God who doesn't lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's there on purpose. It Which in conjunction with Zeus, culture. Zeus was their God. Yep. Right. So you now know. you have a parallel... Here's what the world says that you're following, your culture, and here's the God that doesn't lie. Over the gods here. of this mm -hmm. world and the God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I I think the whole thrust of what you know what Paul tasks Titus to do with these churches is to help them to see if you're going to follow Jesus, it changes you. Right. There mm. has to be some transformation in your character and your conduct if you're going to follow Christ. If you're going to be serious about this, because Christianity is not new here. Uh, you can you can pretty well infer Acts two, day of Pentecost. Yeah. You know when when the apostles stand up filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, it was the languages of the listeners that they're speaking, not their language, mm -hmm. but the people there, and it lists them right. And one of the last two is Cretans, so there were 
they were Jewish people. So evidently the, the story of a, you know, of a, of God and Abraham and all that is, is present on Crete. We don't really know how. And when you say not new, like to the best of our knowledge, that this is roughly written 30 years after that, correct? Yeah. My, to the yeah, best of our knowledge. A little bit more, maybe okay. 32, 34. Yep. But yeah. And so they, they are, but they came to Jerusalem because mm-hmm. that's one of the holy days that you're supposed to, if you can correct, return to Jerusalem to celebrate. So people came from Crete to celebrate Passover and Pentecost. Right. And so if you came that far, you would have stayed for both most mm-hmm. likely. And so they are present when Peter explains everything that they had mm-hmm. been hearing about for the last 50 days, you know, that, that the Messiah came. Mm-hmm. So it's very possible. They're part of the 3000. We don't know this there, but it's very possible. They're part of the 3000 or some of them are who then return to Crete and say, Hey, <laughs> what we anticipated, you know, those who were Jewish has happened. But they haven't changed their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. They're, they're right. just, they've got a new belief system, but it hasn't affected who they are. So that's the task. Like, you you got to, there needs to be some difference here. Yeah, I read it. I don't know the exact quote without right in front of me, but essentially this idea that our belief in the gospel has a direct effect on our behavior. That's the essence of the quote. Yeah. And it's, it's in reference to this because <clears throat> they, they, received the gospel but it wasn't this belief with the heart and the head of like all in it's like mm, okay we like that the pieces of that and we're gonna you know adhere to that to a certain extent but we're still gonna hold on to the things of this world you know and the culture Isn't that like in. such a descriptor of so many of us uh-huh yep i, I i'll mm-hmm. take jesus on sunday but don't expect him to change me Monday right. through Saturday. Right. right. Yeah, well, in the hard times. The afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's it's almost painted in a picture where, you know, people say, well, hey, I'm, I'm not perfect. So I say some things every once in a while. I do some things. But it's because I'm not perfect. Mm. It's like, no, like, we're not striving for perfection. Like, we're striving to be changed into the likeness and the image of God. And so, yeah. Like, there's going to be moments where you do some things that you shouldn't do, but that doesn't justify it. Like, you don't get to just say, oh, I'm, I'm trying. Chip mm-hmm. Ingram in his Titus video on Right Now Media says there's a, there's a pendulum swing response like that. Yeah. There's the those who take grace and mercy as a license. Right. Paul writes about that in Romans 6. Mm-hmm. You know, what shall we say then? Shall we sin all the more that grace may increase or abound? By no means. Yeah, absolutely not. But I'm saved, you know, and we wouldn't probably articulate that very many of us, that that's the way we live. But everybody who dies was all of a sudden a saint. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that mm-hmm. license of grace to cover all their, and it really wasn't a, a life transformation. Now, you could wrestle with that, but that that's the one side. And the other side is legalism. Mm-hmm. You know, that now all of a sudden we've got to do all this righteousness to be righteous. And so both are wrong. You know, and he's trying to direct them into the life transforms right. because of not so that you'll be saved, but because you have been set free. So last night in the, <clears throat> in the cult, cult, in the cult, cult group yeah. that Let's make sure you say we, were, right. we were talking That's about direct from Andrew's mouth, talking about how the gospel has changed multiple people's lives in our group. And <clears throat> looking back a year ago um, on one couple's life where they were at. A year ago versus where they're at mm-hmm. right now, and you know just different things that have happened through them through the course of this year. And their statement last night was, "We would not have handled the situations we're in right now the same way a year ago as what we have today." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, like God's still working and growing them and developing them, but they were absolutely right. Everyone in the group attested to that of like, yeah. The gospel is actually transforming every area of your life. The way you speak, the way you spend your money, the way you talk about this, the, your commitments, your priority, like everything in their life is moving towards an obedience with God. And that's the picture. Mm-hmm. They don't have it all together. None of us have it all yeah, together. It's like a, it's chipping away at you. Yeah. You know, like chipping away at the stone. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're never going to get it all together. 
neither will we. Right. But you look back over the course of a year or two years, three years, five years, whatever it is, are you moving towards Jesus in a relationship with him or are you not? Like, that's where you really tell. It's not in the moment of, you know, a sin where we fail or, you know, it's where are you moving towards? And that really shows a heart. Do you have a heart that is sold out to God? You told me maybe last week, this week, I don't know. Every time your group gathers, somebody shares a testimony. Mm-hmm. Did you just, did you institute that? Did they, how, how does that Yeah, work? so that's all part of, like, when we do launch pad groups, that's just a baseline um, that we do. Um, it get, it just get helps people get comfortable, one, sharing mm-hmm. who they are. So then it levels the playing field of, like, hey, we all have junk in our lives, and we all have a story. And once we understand each other's story, we, we tend to give a little more grace to people if we understand their circumstances. But what's cool about this is, so we've gone back through, and as we've added people, uh, the couple that shared last night, they'd already shared their story about a year ago, and they shared it again last night. The story has changed. I was going to say, was this, the story yeah. is becoming more and more as Jesus as the main character, uh-huh. not them. But so that's what's awesome, that's because awesome. your story, is, even our story, is continually changing yep, and right. how what God works in our lives. So. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, in our Launchpad groups, if you join a Launchpad group, uh, we share stories every week. And then uh, we also pray that person. Well, we learn how to pray uh, in the course of that as it's well. It's a very effective tool. Like, we uh, Launchpad, like, I think we've been doing it for, like, five years probably. Yeah. Because we, I mean, we've incorporated that in all of our Launchpad groups. Mm-hmm. Probably since eight, I would encourage every single life group to That's to what do I was going to say. I, I think. For sure. If that's all you did, yep. It's well, beneficial. and it creates such a bond between your group too, because what are you doing? You're opening up, mm-hmm. like you're letting people into your life, and vice versa, they're letting you into theirs. And it makes your time more about your spiritual journey mm-hmm. than cognitive knowledge, you yep. know, Bible knowledge, whatever. And when we pray, yep. Now we're praying about someone's journey instead mm-hmm. of someone's physical health. And again, what's the whole point of that testimony, Andrew? Well, it's to ultimately show God's grace and mercy in our lives, right? It's not necessarily about you right. at all. It's nothing about you, but what is God Do you doing people how in to do your that? life? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Creation, fall, redemption, restoration. The four lenses in which when we go through all that. <clears throat> um, I think it'd be so cool, though, to like hear, like you were talking about, hear the story, them share their story a year apart. Mm-hmm. How much it, how much has changed. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily <clears throat> what's happened, but like seeing the transformation. Yeah. It changes the way. I, I well, mean, it's cool. and so what has happened as a result of this, as a group forms and you share that story and like last night, you know, they shared, shared their story. Everyone, we learn how to speak the gospel into people's lives as well. So it's not just like, you know, Hey, I hope you get feeling better. Or it's like speaking the truths of the gospel into those people's lives. Like, yeah, God does have a plan for you. Like he's never going to leave you or forsake you. Like, so we learn how to speak that gospel to them. And that is a really powerful thing. And I didn't necessarily tell them to do that. They just started doing that over the last couple months of someone shares their story. And then whoever, not always, but like last night, I think everyone in the room spoke you know, to that situation mm. just as either an affirmation of like God's movement in their life or as an encouragement of, yeah, like keep going. God's doing this. You know, it was really a powerful night. So there, there's a verse at the end of chapter one. I think it just flows right out of mm-hmm. that. Verse 16. They claim to know God. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They're detestable, disobedient, and unfit. We're doing anything good. That's really the direction I'm going this week with this opening message and introduction of Titus. There's no, there's no, there's no growth, mm-hmm. right? There's no transformation. There's just information. Um, that didn't work, right? That's not what the gospel's about. Powerful. You think about like we talked about at the beginning, but the overwhelming task that this must have felt like for Titus. And I think it's important to understand too, this isn't something that trans like that happens overnight. Oh, yeah. Like this would have taken 
hmm. being in circles. It would have taken a lot of relationship time. Let me show you what this looks like. A lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of hard love. And, we, and he starts with the leadership. Yeah. He, he, you know, Titus's real task is not to change everybody's mind, but to mm -hmm. solidify the leadership and make sure that they mm -hmm. are the right people doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. I bet, I bet people left the churches. Oh, I'm sure. They did. I'm sure. I think what's cool about this, and where's the resource coming from? Jeff got me on this, and then I, I looked up a couple, a couple things to uh, to confirm what he told me. But oh, it, fact it, check. It, it was true. <laughs> Chat Wise GPT. It, it was true. But what's cool about it, and so many times, like we just read the scripture today, and and we try to, <laughs> we read the scripture, and then, you know, we we try to apply it or we contextually see what's going on, but like what happened after? And so like you can go and you can read up on some historians that were tracking the island of Creek. Is that how you pronounce Crete. it? Crete. 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 After the fact. And, it's, and he talked about the fact that in the second century, the church in Crete flourished. Hmm. But then by the end, and here, like we don't know how many churches. We know there's multiple churches because Paul's telling Titus to go and set up this leadership, set up these elderships, set up in the in every town. We don't know the number, but like according to historians, by the eighth century there was over seventy churches on the island. Hmm. So like that's pretty cool. Like a lot of times that we don't see that because we're reading that, we're reading that block, and we're trying to make it all about us, which is not. It's all about God and like what did God do through Paul's efforts, through Titus's efforts mm -hmm. in there, and so and it's because they they got to the core issues. Mm -hmm. Right. They established leadership, godly leadership, and the, and they they worked on life transformation, mm -hmm. letting God do some things in them to be different. That's that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Not a real huge place, a hundred and yeah, what was it, hundred thirty five miles by thirty at the widest. I think that's mm -hmm. right. Um, but churches everywhere because and it looks like you know we, I kind of think this sometimes of Jesus. You know, you had big crowds, but you're working with twelve. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you can change 12, that can ripple. Right. And the, and the life transformation is the goal that God has for us. Well, again, like Titus has that same model because we know through Scripture later, like Titus didn't end there. Like he moved on. But what did he do? He instilled God's truth in some in some good men, mm -hmm. in capable men. And they're the ones that take it yeah, that we he hear the history He wasn't really about. there that long. He moves on when, who, who was it shows up? Artemis and Tychicus, mm -hmm. uh, Titus three twelve. They show up, uh, and so Paul sends Titus on. Mm. It's not dependent on Titus. It's, right, it's a correct. movement of God. It's the gospel. Yep. Yeah. That's a whole other lesson in itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not dependent upon a man. Like, I mean, Titus could have easily said, "But, but, but, the, these people aren't ready for me to leave yet." Mm. Right. God's got this. That's his goal. Well, he could have said that on both ways. When, <laughs> one when Titus said, "Like, ah, uh, they're not, they're not ready for your message." Have you seen them? And then, yeah, exactly. Like, ah, oh, they don't have it yet. You sure you want me to leave? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it is not dependent on one person or one person's. Like, it's a movement by the Holy Spirit. Without context, without all this, I tell Titus is kind of dry. <laughs> it is kind of dry to read. But when you understand this whole thing, mm -hmm. like, this this is this applies. Mm -hmm. it, it works today. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Any further thoughts as we get ready to open up Titus? Next week we're going to talk about leadership. Uh, so we're prepping for that. After that, we roll on. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us on the Rethink Podcast. <laughs>